In this video, we'll discuss what the Japanese aesthetic concept of wabi-sabi is, and I'll give you a few tips on how to incorporate it into your photography, adding another layer of depth to your craft. Hi, I'm Josh, and welcome to Shizen Style Photography. To me, wabi-sabi photography is about capturing moments of time that reflect solitude, impermanence, and rustic beauty. Wabi-sabi teaches me to look at the way the world is and appreciate its naturalness. Appreciating the simplicity and beauty of things that are not perfect is the key to adding a bit of wabi-sabi to your photography. Even though we are often taught that the goal is a sharp, clear, and focused photo. Author Richard Powell sums it up as, Wabi-sabi nurtures all that is authentic by acknowledging three simple realities. Nothing lasts, nothing is finished, and nothing is perfect. So what does wabi-sabi mean? Wabi. In essence, it is simple and humble. It's serene beauty expressing a mood of spiritual solitude. Sabi. Sabi means things whose beauty stems from age, referring to the calmness and beauty that comes with something naturally taking form over time. Zen Buddhism has taken these original meanings and shaped them into the concept of the beauty of imperfection and the inevitable and beautiful decay of things over time. This also incorporates an appreciation of the cycles of life in both nature and people. You'll find an abundance of wabi-sabi photography in Japanese tea gardens. The withered age of the tea houses along with gardens of moss, which allude to the beauty and the aged, because we subconsciously associate moss with the passing of time and untouched beauty. The Shizen side to wabi-sabi, as I encourage you to develop your own Shizen style, is that we can appreciate both things that are made by nature and things that are made by people. I believe the epitome of a Shizen style is where you can appreciate nature and creativity in the same scene. Wabi-sabi is sometimes referred to as the beauty of imperfection, but I've begun to steer away from using the word imperfection. Something may not be sleek or clean, but it can still be perfect. I lean more towards the understanding that everything is perfect as it is, in its own way. So here are a few ways of getting started with wabi-sabi in your photography. One way to go about doing wabi-sabi photography is to start with macro shots. While you close in on a subject, you're focusing on the textures, lines, and shapes within a frame, rather than what those shapes actually represent. Texture is a very important thing in wabi-sabi. If you look at old temples, tea houses, or Japanese garden verandas, you'll see different textures of wood, some rough and rugged, and other parts worn smooth from re repeatedly being walked on or touched. Another example is dobe mud walls that line old streets and temple outer walls. These are aged pieces of history, combining natural earth elements and human creativity. Another interesting part of wabi-sabi is that it relates to that which is impermanent and decaying. A photograph catches a moment in time and we use a lot of modern technology through our cameras to capture the impermanence because we find something beautiful about it and we want to share it again or share it with others. In the forest, look for those trees that have fallen and started to decay. Focus on bringing about the beauty and emotion of something that has been lying dead for a few years now. Moss may have grown in certain areas, and this highlights the transformation and the circle of life that takes place. Even though you're freezing a moment in time with your photo, in the moment you're participating in the impermanence. Wabi-sabi isn't really about bold and grand landscapes, but about the small and hidden beauty that is often overlooked. 
So get your macro lens. I use my 90 millimeter macro and get close to the subtle things. I mentioned Japanese tea houses before, and in Japan they have thousand year old traditions that can be seen on a daily basis. But I'm sure you can find traces of history wherever you live in the world. Even here in downtown Buffalo, New York, we have these old grain silos that would make for some great wabi-sabi photography. So another way to discover some wabi-sabi is to head out to a local historical place. Overlook the highly polished and preserved areas, especially the replicas, and look for the weathered beauty that still remains. Some landscape photographers are very much opposed to allowing the hand of man to enter into their photos. But from the standpoint that humans are a part of nature, let this wabi-sabi photography exercise stretch your definition a little bit. Another way to start thinking about wabi-sabi is setting your camera in black and white mode. For Sony cameras and others too, I presume, if you're shooting in RAW, it'll also keep the color data for you later if you want it. But this way, when you look through the lens, you're not going to be distracted by color and are better able to focus on the textures, lines, and shapes. In the end, Wabi Sabi is about simplicity and naturalness. Start by going out each day with one camera and one prime lens. It forces you to be creative with what you have, not worrying about getting that perfect shot by zooming or switching lenses. A big part of Wabi Sabi is working with the inevitable and basically going with the flow. Wabi-sabi is a Japanese aesthetic concept that doesn't really have any formal structure. So is there really any way of defining it or using it authentically? BQ from the 1500s is one of the most famous tea masters in Japan, and he is considered by many to be the leading authority on wabi-sabi. He said that you understand the essence of a concept by understanding its totality. Then after that, you can adjust the form to your needs as they change with the current times. In a way, that's what I'm trying to do here. Present to you the various meanings associated with wabi-sabi and show you how it can be applied in different ways to your photography. Since wabi-sabi is so connected to other Japanese aesthetics, check out my growing playlist around using Japanese aesthetics to improve your photography. Thank you.